Tomorrow, Donald Trump's first criminal trial is set to begin here in New York City in what may be the only case to actually go to trial before the November election. Our next guest says the deck is stacked against him. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett is here to explain. That sounds ominous, Greg. The deck is stacked against him. I imagine that starts immediately with jury selection. Oh, it probably does. You know, Alvin Bragg, the DA, claims that Trump falsified records, which is a mere misdemeanor, and the statute of limitations expired four years before the indictment. So to get around that, uh, he claims that the misdemeanor was committed in furtherance of a felony, but he refuses to say what felony. He sort of vaguely refers to, oh, Trump violated election laws. OK, what laws? What statutes? Well, Bragg won't say, because in a federal election, he has no authority to prosecute federal crimes. He's a local prosecutor. He has no jurisdiction. So he's sort of cleverly plain hide the crime, and Judge Mershon is letting him get away with it, even though this was not an illegal campaign donation, as the DA claims. The Federal Election Commission studied it. They said, this doesn't qualify as a campaign expenditure. Department of Justice investigated said, no crime here. So even though the case is legally absurd, Bragg doesn't care. He's got a liberal judge and what will surely be a Trump-hating jury. And it doesn't matter to him that any conviction would be overturned because the goal here is to influence the upcoming election. It's so important what you just laid out for us, that those with jurisdiction over this trial decline to prosecute it. He tries to bootstrap it into a felony in jurisdiction he doesn't have. So what you're also saying is, all of that, the weakness, would reveal itself on appeal, Greg. But that doesn't matter because justice isn't the point. The point is the show we're about to get this week. That's right. They want to call him a convicted felon. And this is classic lawfare, Will. It's weaponizing the legal system for political gain. It's also an example of unequal justice. I'll give you an example. In the exact same election, 2016, Hillary Clinton did the same thing. She used a lawyer to secretly pay for the phony Steele dossier. She misreported it as legal expenses to conceal it. Well, she got caught, and she was fined by the Federal Election Commission, but she was never prosecuted. Why? Her last name is Clinton. But if your last name is Trump, well, you get criminally charged. I think what the Biden Democrats and the media underestimate is the intelligence of the American voters. They see these dirty legal tricks for exactly what they are, an attempt to affect an election by abuse of our justice system. But what do you expect this week, Greg? Do you expect, no matter what would happen on appeal, no matter the, the, the optimism for true justice on appeal, do you expect a New York jury, and as you pointed out, a, a far-left judge, will make this end in a felony conviction? Well, I do think the, the deck is stacked against him, because this is a judge who is not going to be, in my judgment, fair to the accused. And this won't be an impartial jury, as the Sixth Amendment uh, demands. So, you know, this is very much like the Bob McDonald case, uh, former governor of Virginia. It was a crooked case against him, but they got a conviction, and then it was unanimously overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, it was too late by then. He was ruined politically and financially. And I think that is the template here. So the goal, just to be clear, Greg, is within, let's say the trial lasts six weeks. It's scheduled, I think, for six weeks, but somewhere inside of six weeks to come out with this, with the ability to say, because Donald Trump won't end up in jail. I'm sure he'd be out pending appeal. The goal would be to come out of this entire process with the ability to say convicted felon and reap the benefits of that on an election. Yeah, and that'll invariably affect some people. But in many ways, I think it's backfiring. A growing number of people see Trump here as a victim mm -hmm. of political enemies who've weaponized the law against him, against uh, nobody else but Donald right. Trump. And it's right. only fortified his support. All right. Great analysis. Thanks so much setting up this week for us, Greg Jarrett. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.